Today, we're going to be creating an AI service that's going to generate a YouTube script and the description for you. And we'll be creating a UI using Gradio. We'll have our user agent and then also two assistant agents, one for the script and for the description. And then finally, we'll get a response back from the LLM. And then we'll create the UI so you can make choices for your script. All right, so go ahead and open up your IDE. I'm going to use PyCharm Community Edition. I'll have a link in the description. It's free to download. We're going to go to File, the New Project, and we can just name this project YouTube Services. OK, and then go and hit the Create button. All right, now that we have our project started, open up the terminal. And then we need to install two packages. We're going to type in pip, install py, autogen, and gradio. All right, and when you're done, go ahead and minimize your terminal and then go ahead and right click your directory to create a new file or however you want to create it. And we're going to create a new Python file, and this will be our configuration. So just type config.py. And we're just going to code everything for our configuration here. So the first thing we need to do is import two libraries. So import OS and import .env. Okay, and then we're going to say .env.load.env. And this is going to allow us from our .env file, which we will create next, to get all the properties from there to use in our config list and LLM config. So the next thing is we need to create our config list variable. So config list is going to be equal to an array. And then we'll say model. And then os.get environment, which we haven't got, which we haven't created yet, but we will in a minute. And then API key os.get environment and then we'll just keep uh, the syntax for how you get your API key everywhere else so open AI underscore API key and the next thing we need is the LLM config so LLM underscore config is going to be equal to the first property is the config list and we're going to give it the config list and then finally, I just like to give a timeout of two minutes normally. So that would be 120 seconds. We're done with our configuration. Now we're going to go and create all the agents. So come up here to your directory. We're going to click new and create a new file and just call it agents.py. Here we need to import two things. We need to import autogen and then import the config with the config file, which we just created. The first assistant out of three that we're going to make is we're going to make the script maker. So script underscore maker is equal to autogen dot assistant agent. The name is going to be the name is going to be script maker. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy the system message. We have our system message and then we need the LLM config because again, this is an assistant agent, not a user agent. So you need the LLM config. So we're going to call config dot LLM config to get it from the other file we just created. The next one is we need the description maker. So we'll create another description. Uh, maker assistant agent, so auto gen dot assistant agent. The name is going to be descrip description maker. Man, I can't type right now. Uh, and then I'm going to also copy the system message here as well. And now we have that. And then we also need the LLM config here as well. Okay, awesome. We have our assistant agents. Now we finally need our user agent. So user underscore proxy is equal to auto gen, oops, auto gen dot user proxy agent. Okay, the name, this is going to be user underscore proxy. We're going to have an is termination message. Okay, then after that, we need, I'm going to have the input, human input mode, right? There can be three modes here, always, never, and terminate. I'm going to say never because I don't really want to have an input. I just, because it's going to be UI, I just want to submit all the choices for the script in the description, have the LLM just create it for us and post it on to the UI. So I don't want any intervention um, with the LLM. So I'm going to put never. And then we're going to have the max consecutive reply to zero, because again, I don't care about replying. Before we before we can execute, um, before we can execute this, because of the new update, we're still going to have to export the use autogen Docker to false before we run this. Uh, because I test this out and even if you don't say you don't have Docker, all right, I could have like a working uh, directory um, code and then you want to say use doc use Docker and then you just set this to false. It doesn't matter yet. I think they still need to fix this. So you could either do this or you could just simply set this to false because I don't really want any code created from this. I just want the return responses for the description in the script on the UI. But I'll get there when we go to run this. I'll show you what to export before you actually run all of this. Okay, and then finally, we're going to create uh, the group chat. So 
group underscore chat is going to be equal to autogen dot group chat. And then what we need here is the list of agents that we want that we want to use. So we'll start out with the user proxy, and then we'll bring in the script maker and the description maker. Okay, and then we need the messages. This is going to be equal to an empty array. And then max brown, we'll just say five. And then finally, we need the group chat manager. So a typical, typically, you can just say manager equals autogen dot group chat manager. So group chat is equal to the group underscore chat. And then we need the LLM config, which is going to be config from the config file dot LLM config. Now, the thing we need to create next is the dot env file. All we need to do is go up to your directory, click new, and just create a normal file. So it's going to type in dot env. And then we need two things. We need the open AI API key property. You really could have named this whatever you want. I just did it because this is the standard uh, across the open AI's API. Then you'll put in your API key here, but I just have a, a fill in for right now. And then finally, we need the model, which we'll just start out with GPT-4. Okay, and the last file that we're gonna create is the main Python file, which is where we're gonna initiate everything. So go to your directory again, go to new and new Python file, and we'll just call this main. And what we're gonna do first here is just start the chat. So we wanna just make sure it works first, and then we're gonna add in the UI. So all we need to do right now is import agents, and then for later, we'll also go ahead and import Gradio as GR for the shortcut. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is initiate the chat. So we're gonna say agents.userproxy, because we want the user to initiate the chat. So userproxy.initiate chat, and we will initiate the chat with the manager, right? Because the manager has the group chat, everybody in there. And then finally, we have the message. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste this in there. Okay, and here we are with the message. This is just saying, create the script. I want it to be educational and the topic to be about travel to be in a formal tone in a total of three minutes, and the camera style will be a vlog. All right, and this just kind of goes on what I want the description, uh, the description maker and the script maker to do. Okay, now the problem here is these are hard-coded in. When we go to the UI, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna have five different choices, and all of these will be choices that you're gonna make on the UI. But for now, just to test this out, we're gonna go ahead and hard-code the choices in here. Okay, and the next thing we need to do, and remember I said that we need to do something with Docker if you don't want to use it beforehand, even though we set use Docker property in the code execution to false. Well, what we need to do first is say export autogen use Docker equals false, and then we can run our main file. So we'll say Python 3 main.py. Main and if you have Docker running, then you don't need to worry about this. But if you don't really know what it is and, or you don't have it running, and you just want to execute all of this locally, then just go ahead and write this export and then execute your main file and it'll get started. Okay, so the user proxy sent the message to the chat and the script maker responded back with the script. So we first had the title for travel essentials to smarter, safer, and more fun travels, okay? And because this was a vlog style, so it tells you when to turn the camera on, when to enter the frame, uh, kind of what you're saying, and gives you an idea of what to do like before and after each uh, section. It tells you to talk and so forth, okay? So it keeps going down there, even has a short pause and all of that, okay? And then finally, it's done. Remember, this will only be three minutes, so this is kind of a quick script. And then we had the description maker response and we asked it to uh, have a lot of emojis and it does here, okay? And this is great, we know that it works. So now let's add in the UI. Okay, so with Gradio, the nice thing is it doesn't take a lot of code to just spin up a UI. Like say you just want to prototype something, this is great. You can also make it look really nice, but we're just gonna go over the basics to get something running. Now, the next thing we need is the interface. So we'll come down here and we'll start out by saying demo equals gr.interface. Okay, seems kind of simple so far. Now, there are a lot of parameters for this interface, but we're only gonna use three. And what it's gonna do is just spin up a UI for us. And it might not make sense at first, I'll go through it, but let me just go through the first three and I'll try to explain along the way. And whenever you see the outcome of the UI, it'll make a little bit more sense. The first parameter is fn, which stands for function. And we're gonna create a function after we get done here. So create YouTube info. And then the next one is the inputs. So inputs, this is gonna be an array. So we're gonna have an array of inputs. And these inputs are gonna be the choices such as a dropdown, or you can have checkboxes or radio buttons. And those choices are what we're gonna end up putting into the function and make all of this dynamic. So what is an input? Well, like I said, they're dropdowns. 
radio buttons. So we're going to say GR dot drop down. Now we're going to have to give the choices for the drop down. The choices will be comedy. And then we'll say have educational, which we already hard coded above, and then review. Okay, and then we need a label for this on the UI. This is going to be the type. And then finally, some info so we can kind of know what it means. And this is going to be the type of content. Content. Okay, that's one. And we have four more to write. So we'll say gr dot drop down. We'll have another drop down. And these choices will be the topic. So up here, we hard coded travel. So let's add a couple more. We'll say animals, technology, and then we also have travel. And then we'll also have the label here, which I said is going to be the topic, and then the info, which is going to be main topic slash niche. OK, awesome. Now let's create a radio button. And this is simple. So we're just going to say gr.radio. OK, and with the radio button, it's the same thing. We have an array of choices. So we're going to first have casual. Uh, then and then formal, which we hard coded up here, and then we also let's have informative, informative, and then again the label. This is going to be tone, and then some inf the info is going to be the script tone, something simple. Okay, now let's create a different one. Let's have a slider for the amount of time that we want to have the script to be for. Let's just do something within a small range. So we'll say gr.slider. OK, so we're instantiating the object. And the first parameter is the minimum, and the second one is the maximum. So we'll just choose 1 to 10 minutes. And then the starting value will be 2 minutes. And then again, we need the label, which will just be length. And then the info will say choose between 1 and 10 minutes. And then finally, we're going to have one more. I'll just go ahead and code this in for you. OK, great. So here are our five inputs. And whatever choices we make here are going to be passed into this function that we are going to create in just a couple minutes. We have one more parameter, though, in the Gradio interface, and that is the outputs. Okay, And this is just saying that whatever we call the function and we hit something like a submit button, what is the response? Like, what are we getting from that function? So these are basically the return values. OK, and you can have more than one return value. Let's let's just go through this first. Sorry. So we want an array of outputs. So we want a total of two. We want to return the script and the description from the LLM. So we're going to have a G Gradio. So we're going to say gr dot text, and we would all we need to do is give this a label, and this is going to be the script. Okay. And then we need one more gr dot text, and then a label for this one, and this is going to be the description. And then I'm just going to add one more thing here for you. So you can say theme. And then we can say gr.themes.soft. OK, awesome. Now we are done with the interface. The last thing, well, there's really two things we need to do. We need to create the function and then uh, understand how to actually run or launch the UI. So the first thing is, let's create this function. Let's add some space here. And we'll say def create YouTube info. OK, now what are the parameters here? Well, the parameters are going to, well, we need five for one. And we can just kind of make them relevant to the um, choices here. So the first choice is the type. So you know we can just say type. The second one is the topic. The third one is the tone. The fourth one is the length. And then the last one is the camera. OK, now what do we do here? Well, we just need to basically initiate the chat. But first, we're going to have two variables. And I'll show you why we need them. So we're going to say global description and script. And so for this agent initiate chat, all we're going to do is just move this over. So that's with so that's with inside of the function. And then we need to replace, like here's educational. This is the type, right? So we need to replace it with the variable up here so that we can make the choice. And this can be different. So it's not hard coded. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. OK, so I went ahead and added the variables in here. So you just need the curly braces. And then you can add the variables with inside this formatted uh, string. Awesome. Now, what we need to do is still get the response from the LLM. The first time we did this, you know, we just looked at the terminal to see what the response was. But we want to take those responses and then put them on the UI. How do we do that? Well. We need to retrieve them. How do we retrieve them? Well, you can have a for loop. So we can just say for content. You can really say whatever variable you want there. For content in agent agents dot group chat dot messages. Dot messages. OK, so now we're going to iterate through all the messages from the group chat after it's after we're done initiating the chat and the LLM gave us the response. You can say if content name is equal to 
script maker, so this is the assistant agent. If that's true, then we can say script is equal to the content of the content. Okay. Okay. Wow. I just went through all of this and I realized that uh, there's a parenthesis missing here. I could not for the life of me understand why this was red. Uh, so it was like this. I was like, what in the world? Why is this not working? Well, you just need the parenthesis here. My mistake. This happens. Now we can move on. <laughs> so if the content name is equal to the script maker, well, then we're going to say this global variable up here script is equal to the content. All right. And then we just need one more. So if content name is equal to description maker, the other AI assistant agent, we're going to say description is equal to content of content, All right? So basically the content that retrieved from the description maker. All right, finally, we're almost done here. We have one more return statement to make. And what we're going to say here is just return script and description. All right, so in the outputs here, as you can see, there are two return variables here. Well, also in the outputs here, there are two return variables here as well. So the script is going to go to this label on the UI and the description is going to go here on this label in the UI. And what in the world? Why am I getting another error? Oh, well, if I knew what I was actually doing, there was a parenthesis here I had to get rid of. Okay, now we can move on. Now you can see that the create YouTube info, this is no longer an error. We are almost done. The last thing is to just be able to run this. So we're going to say if name is equal to underscore, underscore, main, underscore, underscore, colon, and then you just have to say demo dot launch. And that's it. Well, if I could spell launch, then we, it would work. Okay, and now we're good to go. We can run it the same exact way. So how do we load up the UI? Well, you can just hit uh, Command L on the Mac and you can just get clear up this whole uh, terminal here. It's called a buffer. We're gonna type the same thing, Python3 main.py. And whenever you run it this time, it's gonna see this. And what this does is it gives us a URL that we can run locally that's gonna give us the UI to make all of our choices and get the responses back from the LLM to be put on the UI. And here it is. So all you have to do is just click this and it's gonna load up the UI for you. And here it is, okay, awesome. It worked. So what this now allows us to do is if you click somewhere here, you can see here all the choices, the topic, the type and everything. So let's just try it out. So we're gonna say the topic, let's just make it education about animals. Let's make this informative. Uh, let's say we want this to be five minutes and the camera style, to, I don't know, let's say cinematic. Eh, let's just say, yeah, cinematic because I don't know what it's going to give us. Now, all you have to do now when we hit the submit function, so as you can see here, let's, let me minimize this. Uh, this is now going to call the create YouTube info function with all the choices that we just made. And it's going to insert each of them into this message. And then we're going to have this for loop whenever it's done. And it's going to return the script and the description variables and put them here. This where the script here is and the description here. So let's go ahead and do that now. And as you can see, it already helps you know that it's loading something. So we'll come back whenever it's done processing. Okay, great, it worked. Look, I mean, it gave us the title, The Wonderful World of Animals, Planets, Fascinating Creatures. Um, because I guess it's cinematic, you know, it has different, tells you kind of how to cut to in the camera a little differently than we did the vlog style. But this is awesome, it gave us a script. And then finally, it also gave us the description for this script with a bunch of emojis. But it, the thing that I wanted to make sure is that it put it correctly on the UI. So it's a little bit more organized. And you could just go ahead, because this is still running, you could just go ahead and change these up, uh, do whatever you wanted, and you could submit it again, and it'll give you something else. All right, great. We got a YouTube AI service working, and it's functional. Now, another thing you can do is you can add on like a title and maybe you want to have like a create a post as well with it. Well, go ahead and try that for yourself. Just remember, you want to add more outputs if you want the function to return different things. Okay, so the outputs have to equal the amount of return variables inside the function. One thing I really liked is working with Gradio for the first time is that it helped me spin up like a prototype and have a UI where I didn't have to worry so much about how it looked. All right, if you have any questions or comments, I highly encourage you to work on this and then improve it. And if you have anything, please share it down below what you've done or if something didn't make sense. For more videos on Autogen, click one of these links and I will see you next time. Have a wonderful day.